there's just a lot of emphasis on being aligned with Ethereum and mm -hmm. you know being the highway on top of Ethereum even right. Uh, mm -hmm. And there, there's like a cultural alignment as well, as you mentioned, you know, with yeah. the decentralization, uh, with subtraction. So I want to just take the chance to get the somewhat inside view of like the DNA and the culture of the mm -hmm. Polygon team, right? We already mentioned a little bit of that. Would you like to just add some color, you know, what are some principles that, that and, and like motivations that guide the team and the decisions? So Ishan, why don't you take this first, you know, and let, let me then... <laughs> Talk yeah. about it, yeah. Yeah, especially with a new perspective, fresh okay. perspective, Vishan. Yeah, yeah no, so, because I hired Vishan, right? So let, let him answer this first. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I think what we are definitely, I think the entire culture, I think just to take a step back, right? I think all of us internally definitely believe in the decentralized world, especially with Ethereum being the ultimate settlement layer, right? And that is what we believe in, right? I don't, we are not there to compete with Ethereum or you know you have these other players who would probably like to eat ethereum's lunch like so to speak we are there to you know enjoy the feast alongside ethereum so everything we do we do it with respect to you know keeping ethereum in mind and the culture that we have here is basically you know just to help ensure that the next 100 million users onto crypto are basically onboarded onto ethereum in some way you know and polygon would like to be that and to facilitate all of that you know you definitely need those projects around being built having to build all those network effects right with more great projects you'll have more great users so basically just to you know keep the hustle on get as many new users onto the platform while at the same time you know provide a lot of more value to the pr current projects that we have right because there are obviously you know there's always that uh, opportunity to just help all the projects that we currently have scale up and you know not just help onboard new web2 users but also capitalize on the existing web3 users that we have so i think the entire culture of you know how we've been relentlessly trying to you know make polygon the de facto scaling solution for ethereum is you know what we have been chasing in the past few years months as well because when i had joined i think we were hardly doing 100000 transactions on a daily basis uh, but now we are, you know, doing almost six to seven million daily transactions. So, you know, that is a testament to the kind of value that, you know, we would like to bring to Ethereum and, you know, just continuing to bring that onto Ethereum and stay close to the Ethereum ecosystem because that is where, you know, a lot of action is definitely happening in terms of, you know, all sectors in the Web3 space. Sure. And, and you know, if I were to uh, just, just briefly talk about company culture in, in, you know, in sort of a sense, that's also for me, like when we structured the teams, right, and when we decided what kind of culture should we have, like how should we build teams, what kind of responsibility should we give. So so I think for me, inspiration came from Ethereum itself, right. So, so I talk about this Ethereum's philosophy or rather this, you know, theory of subtraction, which is that the way or rather the path to true scalability comes when you when you don't try to control things right when you let let sort of the ecosystem sort of organically grow and you don't try to control every aspect of this ecosystem versus you know you try to enable uh, others within the ecosystem to to you know build things that that's kind of when true scalability happens right this aspect this aspect of control you know if if you want to con continuously control things it will start working against you as you begin to scale so, so this is kind of the same philosophy with which we built our teams. So one of the things what we always championed is that we let people take charge of situations. So everybody in the team is a decision maker. Like everybody gets to make decisions and whatever decisions they make, good or bad, we as a, you know, uh, as a part of the leadership will always back those decisions. So one was, you know, have that. So, so follow the same system. So with our teams, there is full freedom. Like for me, I have full freedom from from my management, you know, the founders, etc., to, you know, make decisions to do things what I feel are right. And 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 because all of us are continuously making decisions and continuously moving ahead and forging ahead, that's I think why we've been able to sort of achieve as much as we can. So it's a very unique blend of, you know, company culture and it, it's only possible when you hire very unique kind of people, you know, who espouse this kind of mentality. Like this is not something you can go and replicate everywhere. You need the right people for something like this. So so this is kind of what what is our company culture? Like this is how, you know, when, when I had to sort of build all this and even when the founders decided, like that's kind of how we thought about what kind of culture we want to bring. And 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 this kind of culture, the advantage is, is as you scale, it becomes even stronger. 
because people become more independent and they're able to take more decisions and they're able to organically build business units without us having to you know sort of uh, control everything right and uh, so this is kind of like you know like sort of a sneak peek into how how we like to run things at our end and and you know over a period of time this has shown like good uh, great results uh, mm. so, yeah.